Hello and welcome again to the Romans 1017 podcast where faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm your podcast host Kelly and I want to say thank you for joining me today and spending a little time in fellowship together. It's here that I look forward to sharing God's word with you and I hope that from our short time together you'll be refreshed, encouraged, strengthened, may be inspired, but most of all, I hope you're blessed as you continue to grow, or maybe you're just beginning your walk of faith and a personal relationship with God. It's my faithful prayer and with sincere appreciation that you've allowed me to come alongside you in your walk. Thank you. This is part two of our two-part episode on the importance of reflection. With so much that's going on in life, what's happening in our lives and the lives of those around us, whether it be at home, the challenges there, or maybe some things at work that are driving you nuts, or if you're a business owner, there are the ups and downs that come with business ownership and management. Also, it doesn't help with all of the chaos that's going on in the world to waste time sometimes in watching the news or reading the news or listening to news because when was the last time you heard any good news? Well, I'm hoping that the good news you hear now, you actually hear as part of this episode on reflections because if you take the time to reflect on the blessings of life and reflect upon how you have the blessing, strength, and confidence of God on your side, it's very important to take the time to do that instead of hurting yourself and stressing yourself out and stressing those around you with all of the chaos and confusion that's going on in life right now that if you can take a break from it, then you can take the time to reflect on the things that are favorable and cherish those moments and opportunities for those quiet periods of reflection. So here we go with part two of our series, Reflection, an episode on the Romans 1017 podcast, where Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Thank you so much for spending some fellowship time with me as we listen to this podcast together. Tracing Your Family Tree Let this be written for a future generation, that a people not yet created may praise the Lord. From Psalm 102, verse 18. Lydia found a box of pictures while she was cleaning her parents' attic one year. Although both of her parents had passed away just a few weeks before, seeing the images made Lydia smile. So she decided to create a scrapbook of her family history. When she wasn't sure who someone in a photo was, she would scan it and send it to her great aunt. Photo by photo, Lydia was able to create a story of her family who they'd been, who they'd married what they had done with their lives. She compiled everything she could get her hands on. I just wanted my kids to feel their history, to know who they came from and the decisions their relatives made. It's important to me that they can trace God's goodness through all the generations of our family line, Lydia explains. Creating scrapbooks and organizing mementos can be hard. It can stir up old memories that comfort and ones that cause pain, too. But if you don't have a perfect family, take heart. Jesus also came from a line of people that weren't perfect. In his family history, there was a liar, Jacob, a murderer, King David, and a prostitute, Rahab. But despite their sins and their mistakes, Jesus is proof that God is always faithful. God, when I'm frustrated and overwhelmed with my family, remind me Jesus didn't come from perfect people. Help me to show kindness and grace to my family. And I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Under the stars, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Psalm 19, verse 1. Sophie was a surprise baby for her parents who were in their late forties. Her dad passed away shortly after she was born, so her beloved uncle stepped in to help raise her. He did almost everything with me, Sophie says with a laugh. Growing up, I sometimes felt like he was more my dad than my uncle, but he's always loved me so fiercely. 
Sophie's favorite memories with her uncle include camping in the woods. In her family, it was a tradition for each father to take his children camping for a couple of weeks in the summer. Sophie's uncle took her when she was eight, and she loved the adventure. I remember how quiet it was out there. We'd stare at the sky all lit up with stars, and my uncle would tell the funniest stories about what he and my dad had done together growing up. The experience was probably what led Sophie to become a professor of astronomy. My uncle told me once that God knows every star by name, and I think that's why studying the universe became my passion. God's creation is continually proclaiming His work. You can see this evident in blooming flowers, changing leaves, and even in the snow that God sends to blanket the world. God, you created the world around me with such wisdom and skill. Thank you for the gift of nature. Like all of creation, let me be continually proclaiming your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Loving His Community Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. From 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 Tommy Weinkoop is an entrepreneur and the owner of Fox's Pizza Den in Pennsylvania. He lives in a small town where winter can be long and unrelenting. Three years ago, a snowstorm blew through the town that left many residents trapped in their homes. Tommy's employee showed up to work on time with their usual cheerful attitudes. When Tommy saw his employees were able and willing to work, he took to Facebook. He quickly updated his business page to tell residents that they could call or reach out to Fox's Pizza Den if they needed medications or other errands run. He explained no purchase was necessary, that he simply wanted to help his community. He did this because he knew his small town had many elderly residents and he worried they would become stranded or hurt in the storm. Some people view hardship as an opportunity to profit, but Tommy took the opposite approach. Instead of using the storm to gain, he used it as an opportunity to give. That's the very definition of love. What situation in your life could you use as a chance to give back and bless others? How can you show love and grace to the community around you? God, help me to be a giver. When others are takers, I want to keep on giving. Show me some tangible ways I can be a blessing to my community. I make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray on the go. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. From 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Liam longed to deepen his relationship with God and he asked a friend for suggestions. A friend shared that the best way to grow into God was to spend more time in prayer. So, Liam decided to dedicate five minutes of his day to praying. This worked for a few days, but Liam didn't have a system to track his prayer request or a way to remember who he wanted to pray for. He wanted a way to organize his prayers, and as a busy college student and part-time pizza deliverer, he needed a mobile solution. That's when he heard about Echo Prayer Manager. It's an app that helps users develop vibrant prayer lives. With it, you can set reminders to pray over certain situations, share those prayers with friends, and track how you've seen God respond. Echo is free and easy to use. You can download on both iPhone and Android devices. If for some reason Echo doesn't work for you, there are many other prayer apps that can help you develop a regular, quiet time. What's important isn't which app you use. It's that you grow closer to God by spending time talking with Him daily. God, I want a more intimate relationship with you. Show me how to pray. Draw me closer to your heart. You're all I really want. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Change of Plans In their hearts, humans plan their course, but... The Lord establishes their steps. From Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. 
When Katie Davis Majors graduated high school, she planned to study nursing and go into the medical field. But an autumn mission trip later that same year changed her goals in a big way. Katie fell in love with Uganda and the orphans she met while there. She returned to the States to start her degree, but found herself drawn back to Africa within a few months. While she was there, Katie founded Amazing Ministries, an organization focused on educating and providing for the needs of the poor in Uganda. When a local house collapsed, Katie took in a young girl orphaned in the accident. Katie continued to adopt orphans who were in need of a warm home and a caring mother. By the time she was 23, Katie was providing for 13 kids who called her Mama. She even went on to write a book about her unconventional family titled Kisses from Katie and followed it up with Daring to Hope. Both books explored the themes of faith, loss, and redemption. Katie thought she'd already chosen her path in life, but God led her to change her plans and embrace a different life than she had imagined. Although it can be hard and scary when God directs you to a different path, don't be afraid to follow Him. He knows the way, and He'll never lead you wrong. God, I confess, sometimes when life deviates from what I think it should be, it scares me. But I choose to trust You. You know exactly what you're doing, and I trust your plans for my life. In Jesus' name, I'm giving you thanks. Amen. Remembering God's Goodness The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all He has made. From Psalms 145, verse 9. Shannon was enjoying her second year of college when she found a lump in her upper breast. She mentioned it to her mom, who advised her to make an appointment with her doctor. Uh, it's probably nothing. Breast cancer doesn't run in our family, but get it checked out just to be sure, her mom said. So Shannon followed up and had the lump biopsy. Then a few days later, the news came. The cells were cancerous, and Shannon would need surgery. Since her cancer wasn't very advanced, the doctor chose to do a lumpectomy to minimize healing time and pain. But Shannon still had to go through radiation to ensure the cancer cells were destroyed. A woman Shannon's mom had worked with went through a similar experience and checked in with her regularly. She advised Shannon to do therapeutic activities like journaling and adult coloring. Shannon started writing, turning her journal into a prayer journal. She started keeping a list of all the ways that God had blessed her. Before then, I hadn't spent a lot of time thinking about God, but after my surgery, I realized how good and trustworthy God is. I kept coming back to that truth in the weeks following my treatment. Now, Shannon keeps that journal in a special place. When things aren't going so well, I pull out that list of God's kindnesses toward me, and it soothes my soul. I know God cares about what I'm facing. God Help me to remember your kindness and compassion toward me, even when my circumstances seem dark. You are always good, and you are always faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. No Dropped Stitches For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. From Psalm 139, verse 13. Robin's grandmother taught her to knit when she was just a little girl. She would patiently demonstrate stitch techniques to her granddaughter and taught her how to read knitting patterns. As a beginning knitter, Robin frequently dropped stitches. This happens when a bit of the yarn unravels, leaving a run in the design. An experienced knitter can usually spot a dropped stitch, but those who don't knit don't notice the missed stitch in a completed project. Still, Robin would bring each drop stitch to her grandmother. Patiently, the older woman would fix Robin's mistake while whispering, God never drops a stitch, my dear. It wasn't until years later that Robin realized what her grandmother had been talking about. I was interviewed for a job with a company I really wanted to work for. The interview went well and they made me an offer. But at the last minute, the position fell through. 
I was crushed at the time. Not long after that, Robin received a phone call from her sister. She told me that she was pregnant with quadruplets. We live hours apart, but as soon as I heard the news, I knew I wanted to be closer to support her. So Robin packed up her tiny apartment and moved. She found a good job, and she's thankful for the one that fell apart. Now I understand what my grandmother was saying all those years ago. Truly, God never drops a stitch. It can be hard when something you really wanted doesn't turn out the way you had hoped, but trust that God can use even this disappointment for His glory and your good. God, you never miss a detail, and you don't make mistakes. Help me to trust even when I don't understand what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. We take just a short pause in the podcast first for me to thank you again for joining me in fellowship today and share our walk together, learning more about God and growing our relationships with Him. Second, I just want to remind you that the Romans 10.17 podcast is supported by the kind publishers of Positive Life Audiobooks and Authors Direct, the international audiobook retailer. Some of our podcast episodes are taken as excerpts from the Christian audiobook, Please Just Talk With Me, Stories, Prayers, Scriptures, and Thoughts God Has Been Waiting Your Entire Life to Share With You. The audiobook, Please Just Talk With Me, is over 12 hours of audio containing Bible-based stories, devotions, prayer sets, scripture studies, and more. In this audiobook, you'll discover you can speak with God on healing, understanding, conversation, and prayer, forgiveness, extending grace, loving others, thankfulness, giving, motherhood and fatherhood, and Father God finding peace, and so much more. If you would like to purchase the Christian audiobook, please just talk with me for yourself or as a gift for someone. The Positive Life audiobook publishers have a special offer for listeners of the Romans 1017 podcast. If you send me an email to the Romans 1017 podcast at gmail.com with the words offer please in the subject line of the email, I will gladly send you the link and promo code you can use to receive this special offer. At checkout, you can just enter the promo code that I will send you in the email in the promo box code that's provided by the audiobook retailer and you will receive a 30% discount from the retail price, saving you almost $5 on this wonderful Christian audiobook. It's their way, and also mine, of saying thank you for listening to the Romans 1017 podcast, where faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now, let's get back to the rest of this podcast episode, and thanks again for listening. Living in Between For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. From Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Stephanie was always the woman with a plan. If she set her sights on a goal, she got it done no matter what it took. She was the type of person that felt a need to be in control of everything and often had a plan A, B, C, D, and more. But in the past few months, Stephanie has come face to face with many circumstances that she can't control. I've always done everything through sheer will, but I've spent most of the past few weeks just trying to make it through. Stephanie's husband is in the military, and she's waiting to hear where they'll be transferring her family. Her youngest son has learning disabilities, and she's waiting for an official diagnosis for her child. I'm learning to tackle life one day at a time, Stephanie shared. One thing God has been teaching me lately is that He already knows the next step. My job isn't to figure it out. It's to trust that He has it all under control. Seasons where life feels unsettled, like you're in between or waiting, are a great time to slow down and look to God. Often these seasons exist because God longs to become your focus. So, He removes from your life other distractions. But, 
Rest assured that God never wastes any season in your life. He has a plan, and He's putting it in motion even if you don't see it quite yet. God, help me as I live in these in-between seasons. Waiting is hard. Listening is hard. But you have a plan and a purpose of this time in my life. Help me to lean into you and trust your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. New Every Morning Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. From Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. On the outside, Ned's life looked good. He was a caring husband to his wife and a doting father to his three sons. He actively participated in his community, helped out at his church, and shared his resources with others less fortunate. But night after night, Ned came home from work and drank. It started as an innocent habit, having a beer after work. It was an easy way to unwind. But as time passed, Ned needed more and more beers to feel relaxed. Eventually, Ned started discreetly sneaking sips of alcohol in between phone calls at the office where he worked. He also began missing his children's events and practices. His wife urged him to see a counselor who specialized in substance abuse. But Ned refused and eventually he was fired for drinking on the job. Then a few weeks later, he picked up his kids from school while he was drunk. Upon learning this, his wife moved out and took the kids with her. Distraught, Ned reached out to his local pastor. He poured out the whole truth and begged for advice. What do I do? I've been this way for so long that I don't think God wants me anymore. Ned's pastor reminded him of Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. God has new mercy for you every single day, Ned. He never grows tired of you and he never gives up. You need to make changes in your life, but with God's help, you can overcome this. God, help me to remember that you are full of mercy and tenderness toward your children. Let me feel that mercy in my own life and extend it to others too. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God reigns. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on His holy throne. From Psalm 47, verse 8. Kelly felt that familiar pit in her stomach as soon as she saw the office manager. As a nurse, she worked for Dr. Benson, who had hired his wife to run the office. Although Dr. Benson was pleasant, his wife rarely was. She was always cornering Kelly and sharing her latest conspiracy theory or a negative report she'd seen on the news. Kelly tried to leave as early as possible, but today she had to stay late to educate a patient about her diabetes diagnosis. As she clocked out, she saw Dr. Benson's wife head straight toward her. Taking a deep breath, Kelly plastered a smile on her face and listened while the other woman prattled on. When her phone notified her she had a text message, she managed to leave. Later, Kelly reached out to a friend. I see her and I get all these knots in my stomach, she explained. She always shares these doom and gloom prophecies and I don't know what to do anymore. Her friend shrugged. Just listen. I've learned to let people rage and focus on the fact that God reigns. He ultimately decides how each story will end. You don't have to let her negativity color your attitude. It's hard to deal with a gloomy Gus who never has anything positive to share. But that doesn't mean you have to be dragged down by their negativity. Instead, turn your eyes to Jesus and keep your gaze there. God, please, don't let me absorb the negativity of those around me. I want to be a bright light shining for you. Let my gaze be fixed on you and only you. In Jesus' name, amen. Extending a warm invitation. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. From Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Robbie checked the weather on his smartphone, and his heart sank. 
At 19, he was an employee for a local hotel, and he dreaded seeing the low nightly temperatures. The hotel where he worked was in a downtown area that had a large population of the homeless. He'd made friends with Austin, a military veteran who had spent the past few months sleeping on park benches. Life just kind of fell apart all at once, and I couldn't put it back together again, he explained. When he clocked into work that night, Robbie checked the logs and several of the rooms would be open for the evening. He gathered his courage and hurried to his manager's office before he could talk himself out of it. Robbie opened the door when the older man barked permission. He wiped his sweaty palms on his jeans. Record cold temperatures are expected tonight. The manager kept playing a game on his smartphone. I have a weather app too, so spit it out. Well, I checked the log and we have more than a few empty rooms. Uh, I can book them in my name. You can take it out of my paycheck. Robbie's manager stopped the game and leaned back in his chair. Are you having a family reunion in the middle of this mess? Robbie shook his head. I know a couple of guys. They don't have any place to go, he flushed. Jesus was homeless once. The manager considered his request for a minute before finally blowing out a breath. Keep it quiet, kid, and don't get me in trouble. Robbie was almost to the door when his manager called out, Oh, and put me down for half of the rooms. God, help me to be invitational when it comes to others. Show me how to be a blessing to someone else this week. In Jesus' name I ask, Amen. A bold decision. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. From Esther chapter 4, verse 14. Esther had spent years being told to hide her Jewish heritage by her uncle Mordecai. She knew she'd be in danger if she revealed to the king her true background. So when King Xerxes put the crown on her head and declared her queen, she still held back her family history. But the day came when all of the Jews were to be sentenced to death. Her uncle encouraged her to go to the king and plead her cause. Esther's stomach must have dropped when she heard her uncle's words. She explained that she hadn't seen the king in over a month and she could not enter his presence unless she had first been called into it. Mordecai again encouraged her to go to the king, pointing out that God may have set her in the royal palace for just this very reason. So Esther told her uncle and the Jewish nation to pray for her and fast. She would do the same and afterwards she promised to seek out the king. Up until this point, Esther's silence had guaranteed her survival, but she'd made a bold choice to stand up for her nation. Not only did God reward her bravery by rescuing the Jewish people, he also destroyed their enemies. God, when it's hard to speak up, please give me courage to stand. I want to be brave and bold, just like Esther was. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again for spending this special time with me on this episode of the Romans 10:17 podcast. I'm glad to have this time with you. Every Wednesday, I will deliver to you a new podcast episode, sometimes devotional stories, scripture studies, Christian living examples and points of view, Bible studies, and so much more. Here's a small preview of the next episode you'll find here on the Romans 10:17 podcast where faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. In our next episode, it will be a very interesting episode to share with you. It will be titled, God Has Not Given Up On You. You've done it again. You promised yourself you wouldn't. You told your spouse you were over it. You swore to your kids it was the last time. You looked into the eyes of your concerned parent and said, never again. But here you are. You thought things were going to be different. You were going to be stronger. You were going to overcome. You were starting fresh. Then it came, the familiar temptation. Maybe it was subtle, the idea that you could handle one glass of wine or visit just one disturbing website. 
all you needed was one tiny pill to get by or one embrace from your lover. But before you know it, you're tangled up in sin again, and the enemy pounces. His words are cruel and cutting. Don't you see? You'll never be free, he says. You'll always be bound to this. What makes you think anybody could forgive you? You've disappointed God. You let him down, you had your chance, and you blew it. You fear there's too much truth to his words. Can God really forgive you again? Aren't you just another lost cause, a failure he's tired of putting up with? That's the next episode on the Romans 10:17 podcast. I look forward to being with you then. Now, back to our current episode, and most of all, again, I say thank you for listening. Led by the Spirit Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good Spirit lead me on level ground. From Psalm 143, verse 10 Gina had always heard about Christians doing something simply because they were led by the Holy Spirit. But she'd never experienced this for herself, and she wondered why. Then one day, Gina was on her way to work when she thought about the position at her company that was just about to open up. One of her favorite co-workers was moving away, and management hadn't found a good replacement yet. She'd often thought that Anne would make a great addition to the office, but she was busy raising two kids. Still, she couldn't shake the feeling that she should stop by Anne's home and tell her about the job. So she did a U-turn and went back to Anne's home. When she arrived, she found Anne looking pale. When she asked her what was wrong, she answered that she had just come from a doctor's appointment with her husband. The doctor had just informed Anne that her husband would need several surgeries and would be unable to work in the coming months. I'm scared, Anne whispered when Gina hugged her tight. After listening to her fears and comforting Anne some more, Gina shared about the position at her company and promised to talk to her supervisor about the spot that day. When she shared the experience with her ladies' group, one woman beamed at her, Gina, what you experienced was being led by the Spirit. You didn't know how or why, but you knew to go to Anne. God, help me to be led by your Spirit. Make my heart sensitive to your leading so I can hear and respond to you. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. My cup overflows. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. From the 23rd Psalm, Chapter 5. Tamra never knew her father. He was a first responder to a horrible disaster. Although he saved many lives, he was killed in action. This left her mother alone and pregnant with her first child. Growing up, Tamara's family struggled in many different ways. The biggest one was financial. Without a second provider, Tamara's mother couldn't afford a lot, but she always found a way to give back to those in need. Once, Tamara watched her mom give some money to a hopeless man. When she asked why, her mother simply responded, Because my cup overflows. It wasn't until years later that Tamara realized her mom's perspective allowed her to give despite her own struggles. She always had this way of looking at life. She was thankful for everything, both the big and the small. Tamara says her mom's generosity has influenced how she thinks about her own money, time, and energy. It's hard to give sometimes. It's not my first instinct. Then I think about my sweet mama and I find myself repeating those four words. Because my cup overflows. Giving back even when you don't have a lot comes down to perspective. If you view something as a gift from God, then it's easier to share your own resources with others. God, I ask you to help me to have a thankful spirit and a willingness to give. I thank you for all the ways my cup overflows, both big and small. And I make this prayer of thanksgiving to you in Jesus' name. Amen. New Places As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. From Joshua chapter 1 verses 5 and 6 Joshua had spent years learning from his mentor Moses and protecting the people of Israel. But the day came when Moses passed away and it was time for Joshua to lead the great nation that God had created. God starts his instructions to Joshua by reassuring him of his holy presence. Then he goes on to command Joshua to be strong and courageous. It's not that Joshua is cowardly. He was quite brave. But God knew the difficult tasks that would lie ahead for Joshua, so he promised his presence and encouraged him. He wanted Joshua to know that his nation was about to enter into the promised land. It can be hard when God calls you out of the familiar. Joshua was comfortable living in the desert lands with the Israelites. He was accustomed to being a nomad. But God had bigger plans and longed to move his people. When God calls you into new places, you don't need to fear. You do not need to be afraid. He will be with you just as he was with Moses and Joshua. So take courage, precious one. God will guide you on your journey. God you know that sometimes new places are scary for me. It's easy to feel small and want to hide out. But please give me the faith that's bigger than my fears. Lead me in your paths, and I ask for your strength and guidance in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it was nice to share this podcast episode with you, and I hope you'll join with me again next week when we can come together in fellowship with Christ and listen to His words and learn about His thoughts. I always hope to do my best to bring you episodes that are helpful, thought-provoking, honest to Scripture, and faithful to God's Word and the message of Christ. The episodes might be Bible study, topical devotion stories and prayer sets, Scripture focuses and memorization activities, journaling activities, practical life applications of faith and Christian points of view to consider. As I look forward to sharing the Word of God with you, I make you this promise to do my very best to bring you encouragement and support in your walk of faith with God just as importantly as I hope and pray to bring glory to God in all that I do. I do look forward to being with you again for the next episode of the Romans 1017 podcast where Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Be blessed, my friend.